Hello and welcome to Swindon Museum and Art Gallery's Art Snaps podcast. I'm Katie and I'm delighted to bring you episode 17 in this series, which explores Swindon's fascinating collection of modern British art. This week has been the launch of a national initiative called the Big Outdoor Art Challenge, and we've been encouraging people to make their own land art using objects from nature, foraged on walks or even from their own back gardens. And it's a great way to get creative, get back to nature and really find ways to connect with it. And this got me thinking about artworks in the collection which are inspired by the experience of being in a landscape. So I'm going to look at three very different pieces by Paul Nash, Richard Long and Roy Bisley, because each of these artists in their own way try to evoke a sense of place through their art. First, we'll look at the earliest piece from this trio, which is The Edge of the Wood from 1944, by the brilliant Paul Nash, whose painting is defined by its ability to recreate the experience of a place, rather than simply an accurate representation of it. And we'll chat about this piece in a moment, but first I want to tell you a bit about Nash, because he was so important to the development of modernism in British art, particularly in the 1930s and 40s. He founded a group called Unit One in 1933, whose goal was to promote modern art, architecture and design. And the artists involved embraced two main currents in art, which were abstraction and surrealism. Unit One was only active from about 1933 to 35, so it was quite short-lived, but it was instrumental in establishing London as a centre of modern and abstract art in the mid-1930s and it included a number of artists who made important contributions to British art, including Henry Moore, Ben Nicholson and Edward Wadsworth, who I'm mentioning specifically here because they're also represented in Swindon's collection, and I've spoken about their work in previous art snaps. Paul Nash, along with his younger brother John Nash, is also known for his role as an official war artist in both world wars, which essentially meant that he was employed by the government to record the effects of war. And through his emotive landscapes, Nash left behind some of the most iconic images we have relating to those conflicts. He's also among the most important British landscape painters of the 20th century, because he was interested in reviving the Romantic landscape tradition in England and bringing it into the 20th century through an engagement with modern European art movements. And as a result, he managed to convey heightened emotion through his landscapes. And this is partly why some of his wartime paintings are so powerful. So with all this in mind, Swindon Museum and Art Gallery is very lucky to own this late watercolour by Nash, which was painted in 1944, a few years before he died. Edge of the Wood is a study for an oil painting, which was created at the Gloucestershire home of Nash's friends, Mr and Mrs Charles Nielsen, which Nash described as an enchanting place and which would in fact become a wartime refuge. Swindon's charming piece is one of several large watercolour studies painted on an eight-day visit to the Nielsen's in March 1944. And though I don't know this for sure, it's likely that it was painted outdoors in front of the woodland scene that it depicts. This is because of the swiftness with which it's been painted, with those lovely fluid brushstrokes, which seem to focus on capturing the shapes and textures of the wood, very simply and beautifully, with just the paint and the brush, and little preparatory drawing, if any at all. And I particularly like the way these quick, decisive brushstrokes draw the eye from the foliage pushed right up to us in the front right of the painting, back to the tree in the distance to the left. The colours are also particularly striking in this piece, because they create this lovely sense of changing colour which comes with spring, from deep maroon to dazzling blue, And this combination of hot and cold colours is actually favoured by Nash in much of his later work, but it works particularly well in the context of this springtime woodland scene. As in many of his landscapes, Nash hasn't focused on capturing specific detail, which in this case is likely because he was planning on working it up to a more finished oil painting. Instead, we're left with the sense of the wood as a place, its colours, its movements, its textures. And I think this is what makes it a particularly special and interesting painting. Next, I want to look at the artist who was the inspiration for this episode of Art Snaps, which, as I mentioned, coincides with the big outdoor art challenge, which is encouraging people to make their own land art by using natural foul materials and environments. 
You'd be right to ask what this has to do with this odd piece of paper with a map and a photograph stuck to it. So let's explore this a bit further. The artist of this work is Richard Long, who was, and still is, a pioneer of land art, which essentially involves making temporary interventions in a landscape. Long began experimenting with this way of working in the 1960s by creating land art which was dictated by time, landmarks or other elements of the setting. And he's been developing this work ever since. It's a way of physically connecting with the landscape and because of its transient nature, often the only existing evidence of the artwork is documentation. This is the case with two walks from 1972 in Swindon's collection, which records two walks Long took in Dartmoor on an Ordnance Survey map. If you look closely, you can see two straight lines crossing each other to the right of the map to indicate where he went. And interestingly, we can see how the flat landscape of Dartmoor has dictated the interaction Long had with it, as it makes straight walks with a compass very easy to achieve. So we have two straight lines for two straight walks, which are also marked with start times and the time it took him to walk the routes. The photograph to the left of the image shows an ancient carved stone cross, which was at the crossing point of the two walks. Though it doesn't look like much, two walks is part of a larger body of work Long did to explore this landscape in a variety of ways, altering aspects of his walks to examine the effect on his experience of a place. It isn't an artwork in the traditional sense of the word, but rather a record of a creative intervention, which gave him a greater understanding of this landscape. Our final piece for today is by local artist Roy Bisley, who was born here in Swindon in 1930, and became known for his depictions of everyday life in the town. And he contributed to the arts community here by teaching at the Swindon School of Art in the 1960s, as well as being a member of the Swindon Artists Society and an active campaigner for Swindon to have an art gallery, which was added to Apsley House, which houses the museum collections, in 1963. After a move to Australia, Bisley began painting in a more abstract way, and then a bit later on, several visits to Iceland led to arguably some of the strongest paintings of his career, which were inspired by the Icelandic landscape and made in the 1990s. And a selection of these, along with a series of prints that he also made inspired by the landscape, were gifted to Swindon Museum and Art Gallery in 2002. This piece from 1992 is currently on show at Swindon Civic Offices as part of the Art on Tour programme, and it's a really unique piece among the Bisley landscapes owned by the museum, because it's the only one painted in a portrait formation rather than a horizontal landscape formation, as would be expected for this subject matter. And so the height of the piece seems to add to the monumentality of the landscape and somehow really nicely brings together the layers of water, earth and sky, which make up the composition. We're able to read the piece from the icy blue water to the deeply shadowed mountains and up to the dark, heavy clouds. So we really take in the atmosphere of the scene and I also love the way he's captured the contrast between the solidity of the rocks and blocks of ice with thick outlines and the softness of the clouds with those quick dabs of paint. We really get a sense of the qualities of this immense and surprisingly varied landscape. I also think that within the context of today's climate emergency, this painting acquires an added layer of meaning. Though it's unlikely that in the 1990s Bisley was painting with climate change in mind, it can certainly be read as a homage to a rapidly changing landscape. That brings us to the end of this episode of Art Snaps, and as always, I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet of art appreciation. Don't forget that you can subscribe to Swindon Museum and Art Gallery's YouTube channel if you want to receive notifications when new Art Snaps are released. You can also follow Art on Tour 2020 on Facebook or at Swindon Gallery Art on Tour on Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest news on the project, which at the moment is all about bringing Swindon's collection of modern British art to you in the comfort and safety of your own home. Thanks very much for listening and bye for now.